Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so today's upload is going to be, as you can tell by the video uh, title, uh, why this upcoming pattern change may result or indicate or could indicate, could possibly indicate a, a rather interesting slash <clears throat> chilly, maybe snowy fall in, in some parts. <clears throat> so let me explain what I'll be doing. So... Uh, I made these videos in the past before, <clears throat> and they've consisted of previous pattern changes, like the one in July, like the one in August, and how that could contribute to uh, the winter. And this is not clickbait, because I did some research, and <clears throat> what I basically did was, periods of, <clears throat> of August, previous Augusts, you know, previous years, how they turned out, or you know, whether whether it was chilly or warm, and in this case it was chilly, because <clears throat> that's what we're expecting to get, chilly conditions, and how that impacted the fall weather of that year. And let you know, me tell you some interesting things, so uh, stay tuned for that. But first I want to show you uh, the proof of the chilly weather that's coming. <clears throat> so... Uh, consider liking the video, consider subscribing to this channel, um, again, it really, <clears throat> really helps this channel grow, and I really appreciate it, so thank you for doing that. So we're right now looking at our 6 <clears throat> of the GFS model run, and, uh, hopefully we could just, okay, I just wanted to preload it, but, uh, what you can notice if, if I run this through quickly, we have this low pressure, it's marked by high, but it's really uh, dominated by low pressure, um, this weekend brings in very chilly uh, air for <clears throat> parts of the country, especially in the northeast. Then it gets a little bit warm. You could see some warmer waves, but then another cool blast of air, and you could see some active weather again, some precip uh, marked with that. And I want to just show you this two meter temperature anomaly. You could see it lines up with very chilly conditions. This is how the first one looked like. That's going to occur this Saturday. You could see, I mean, very, very, very chilly conditions. It's not really going to be warm at all. It's going to be very nice and pleasant. Well, no, I should rather specify. <clears throat> uh, for where because uh, you know the east coast maybe not as much as the midwest i think here in this area should be the chilliest <clears throat> the south uh depending on the magnitude <clears throat> of the cold shot uh you know maybe it will get down as far south as the southeast um but you know it'll be more in between the northeast should get chilly um but it'll have more periods of warmth in between and then you can see the west will rather stay warm all throughout the long range uh you're not really impacted by the by these chilly temperatures so let's just jump back to our one or two and you can notice that you can see northeast <clears throat> is a little bit warmer <clears throat> than the in the Midwestern Plains, but eventually the uh, the chilly temperatures do reach to it. Um, you can see, especially right here. But you know, it takes quite a while. I mean, look at see, you can see it's very chilly here. This is Friday, August thirtieth, and by the time it really reaches there, it's M Monday, September second. While it's still chilly across the Midwest, the West um, itself may be a little bit warmer, and you can see that uh, continues. Um, it seems like the cool <clears throat> cool weather may back off some warmth. You know, this won't be all chilly. It'll be more of <clears throat> of of cold or chilly shots mixed in with um, with warm air so you know you can see like here's a period of a little bit uh, warmer weather weather uh, the anomalies aren't that great in either direction you can see the west still remains pretty warm <clears throat> but uh, nothing too terribly <clears throat> chilly around average for most of the country but then we can see another shot of chilly air comes in and that pushes um, the heat to become more oppressive in the west <clears throat> and uh, the cold weather to be more noticeable in the east. So um, you can see that that's not just the year, um, the the GFS. That was just the GFS. But I want to show you the other models, like the European. This one only goes out to 240 hours. But let's look at this. You can see there's the one <clears throat> for uh, this weekend. It's not showing it as strong as what the GFS was showing it, but it's still. Um, you can see no no heat wave, no warming pattern. It's rather just not as chilly as what the GFS is showing, but then look at that, we see another cool wave coming in. This is for next early, uh, mid to late next week <clears throat> and the weekend, and uh, you can see that maintains itself, and there will probably be another one coming in soon. So generally on the same page, Look at the let's look at the GEFS models, <clears throat> which is uh, 20 or 30 models of the GFS family, and you can see that they're... Uh, also showing this troughing going on. This is also ne next midweek of next week, and I apologize. 
this is not really loading that fast, but <clears throat> again, a little bit warmer in this phase, you know, September 2nd, 3rd, but then we could possibly get another cool off. What the GFS is showing, the GEFS wasn't sho isn't showing that really, but it's still showing um, uh, below average temperatures for this area, despite <clears throat> it being more of a zonal flow based on a 500 millibar geo potential high, you could still see. It's kind of like, it comes in waves. You can see it was chillier here. It gets a little bit warmer, then chillier again. It gets a little bit warmer, and then we could get chillier, or, you know, the pattern may break. But what I want to show you, you know, what I wanted to show by that is that the, the rest of August <coughs> will be rather chilly. And now, what does that mean? What does a ch rather chilly August mean? So, you know, historically and based on anomalies. So I, I made this, <coughs> I made this, uh, this uh, slide presentation and I compiled a bunch of data together and I wanted to show you this too so you can see that this is a title why this upcoming pattern change indicates or could indicate a cold fall so let's jump into this uh, you can see that this is what I found for this year 2019 August 1st through August 18th look like in terms of the temperature anomalies <clears throat> you can see that it was actually pretty warm across much of the southern US but notice how the cold cooler air starts creeping in towards the end <clears throat> of the long range so this was you know a couple days ago it's right up there and this as again as I showed you will dive down into the US for the rest of August so August overall should end up as being uh, around average for most, starting off above average and ending off cool, you know, below average <clears throat> for uh, the later part <clears throat> of the of the month. So, what does you know? What do, I basically found <clears throat> August that looked similar to this pattern. <clears throat> and I found, uh, you know, the ones that had chilly August later on, and I and I selected a bunch of years. I think <clears throat> I have uh, uh, I have many written down here. Hold up, okay. Uh, I had 2015, 2018, 2014, 2009. 2008 was more of a questionable one. 2004, 1997, 1994, 1992, 1988, 19 you get it. There's a lot of years. And I wasn't going to screenshot all of them because <clears throat> some of them uh, didn't have the same impacts. And I will show you a wide variety though. So, uh, or just a couple at least. You could see that. Uh, so, what I basically did was based on this August, what's upcoming, uh, how did it impact the September historically. And what's actually strange is that um, last year, it was very uh, similar to uh, this year's August, and you can see that this is how it impacted the September. Uh, you can see the chilly year was, again, very close to being spread into the U.S., <clears throat> and uh, you can see that uh, much of the country uh, was actually still warm. So that year was, you know, showing that the September may or may not be really... Um, warm or cold it may be more, more on the warmer side even even if the august ends up ends up being cooler and then you can see that the <laughs> the whole fall however ended up being uh, uh cold even though the september was a warm and you can see it's still 2018 now we move on to 2009 you can see most of the fall was actually <clears throat> not that uh not that cold i mean it was pretty warm across the north and pretty chilly across the south <clears throat> and it was a similar august so you can see it's not all clear and cut here Here's another one that rather shows a a warming a trend for or a warm fall from September to November 2004. But here we have another one that shows a chilly September through November 19. Uh, this is 1997. So you can see that this is you know it wasn't as clear cut as you know it as some of the other ones I've been making this year. But based on you know what what the first half of the month uh, looked like. And what the upcoming pattern change uh, was to bring. This is, you know, it wasn't 100% uh, soundproof, but you could see the this one was cold. This one was rather chilly, warm. You know, kind of in between, especially for the south, is chilly. This one was rather warm. This one was rather chilly. So <clears throat> these are only some of the years. And again, I mentioned that I had a bunch. I mean, I had 1988, 1987, 1984, 1982, 1985. There was a bunch, and this was only one of the <clears throat> of the these. So. Uh, this um you can see that this is really uh, a a hard one to predict but based on other <clears throat> of analogs and based on other features that already occurred this summer i do think that this upcoming pattern change rather indicates a pretty chilly fall and <clears throat> you could see that this is the precipitation rate and uh for from september to november of a bunch of years the ones that were the closest to this year's pattern change and you could see that there's several, 2018, 1997, dating all the way back to 1982. Um, so this is what the 
fall and precip anomalies look like. You can see it was much wetter across much of the country. So, you know, <clears throat> if we get a f fall like this or even like uh, this and we line it up with some above average precip, we could get a more snowy fall. <clears throat> now, I'm going to include in the title what, why it could mean a snowy fall because it doesn't really indicate, you know, I'm foolproof um, because of years like this where it was warm. But, um, you know, again, based on other features I've been looking at, it seems like this pattern change is uh, going to be a recurring pattern throughout the fall, uh, at least the fall and possibly the winter, but I may make another video on that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching, consider liking the video, consider subscribing to the channel, I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya!